Hello everyone, I'm so sorry to have kept you all waiting. I know this video is coming at you a bit late, but on the day that Miss SA entries closed, I just wasn't feeling doing this. And then also today, which I'm filming this at 8 o'clock on Saturday night. Yes, I'm 25. What else could I possibly be doing? But the dedication to you is real and today as you guys might know or might not know was the coronation which i actually sat and watched from 10 in the morning probably up until five this afternoon after which i had some domestic duties to take care of and now i'm finally sitting down and making this video and yes i know what you're thinking girl you prioritized watching the coronation over us and I know, my grandfather would be rolling in his grave, he, a he absolutely hated, and I mean hated, everything about British culture because of our history with the Brits and whatever, but I don't know, I just felt like it was such a historic day and I was all cozied up with my hot chocolate and my blanket on the couch watching the thing and I don't know, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So let me know what you guys thought if you actually watched the coronation. Okay, on to more pressing matters, more serious news. Entries for Miss South Africa have officially closed and we know more or less the famous faces who have re-entered. I still have to do a video all about my predicted top 30 and for that I will have to go into detail with every single woman that has entered but of course when a famous prior contestant enters everybody instantly knows about it and that's what we're talking about in this video. Those famous prior entries and this year is no joke guys it is so exciting but as we know with miss south africa we cannot expect all of these women to end up in the finals um as we saw last year with bianca beside notes just the other year she was at the top of miss south africa and then last year she didn't even make top 10 so anything is possible but of course we have to start with the most shocking re-entry that i don't know i think i've ever experienced in my south africa history and that is the re-entry of natasha yubar natasha of course was one of the favorites to win miss universe 2020 she competed at miss south africa 2020 where she placed as the second runner-up and then was sent by the miss south africa organization to Miss Universe where she was a fan favorite. I mean, this was right after Zozi had won Miss Universe. So everyone was thinking that South Africa was coming for the back to back. Unfortunately, we all know that Natasha didn't even end up placing at Miss Universe 2020, which was heartbreaking, but she is back. She is back for the Miss South Africa crown. And this is especially shocking because I don't know, like I assumed and I think that everybody just assumed that because she has already represented South Africa at Miss Universe that she wouldn't be allowed to enter Miss South Africa again or that she wouldn't want to enter Miss South Africa again. I mean, to be real, in South Africa, Miss Universe is the most coveted international title. Every girl and their grandmother dreams of Miss Universe when they think of pageantry, especially because South Africa has done extremely well at Miss Universe recently. So I think everybody just assumed that after Natasha already went to Miss Universe, bearing the South African name across her chest, that she wouldn't enter Miss South Africa again, but she has. And I think that the Miss Universe experience just matured Natasha so much. Her mindset has matured a lot when it comes to pageantry. And obviously, I think this time she is in it for the Miss South Africa crown only. And I think she very much would see it as a bonus if the Miss South Africa organization were to perhaps send her to Miss Supranational or Miss World. But I definitely think that her heart is set on Miss South Africa. Now, just because in a previous year she placed as the second runner-up doesn't mean that she's even going to make top 10 this time so we'll have to see but for me i made a whole video on natasha's re-entry and my concerns about that so feel free to go and watch that another girl from 2020 who has entered is jordan van der Pfeiffer, who was also a big 
crowd favorites in 2020. This year, I am feeling such positive, intuitive vibes and feelings towards Jordan. I feel like this could really be Jordan's year. Another thing that is counting in Jordan's favor is that the last time she entered Miss South Africa in 2020, she only reached the top 10 and went no further. She wasn't sent internationally. And we know that the new owner of Miss Universe is very picky. She's very picky about girls who are runners up or have represented their countries elsewhere and stuff like that. She wants pageant virgins. And I think that Jordan, oh, she could very much be the one. She could very much be the one to bring a Miss Universe crown to South Africa once again. So it's very exciting to see her re-entering as well as the next woman, Melissa Nayamuli, another 2020 alumni. This woman was so many people's fave, so many people's fave. I remember to this day, I've never seen so many people rage about a girl as Melissa Nayamuli. She also has this amazing message about peace and being anti-xenophobic, which is actually a big problem in South Africa. It's actually a very big persistent problem. And um, I just think that Melissa is brilliant. And she could, just like Jordan, also potentially be the one to bring Miss South Africa another Miss Universe crown. Her speaking is also brilliant. I love Melissa. I really hope that she and Jordan both make top 10 this year. Obviously, I hope the same for Natasha, but I feel like Natasha, you know, she's already, she's she's had that opportunity and that chance already. Of course, I have said before, I think her intentions are very pure with the Miss South Africa organization this year, but if she doesn't make top 10, I wouldn't be as heartbroken as I would be if Jordan or Melissa hasn't made it because both of these women, absolutely brilliant and in my opinion, definitely deserve the opportunity to represent South Africa abroad. Now, another re-entry that we must discuss is Catherine Grunewald. Yes, yeah, she was in the top 10 at Miss South Africa 2021 and she was also in the top 35 at Miss South Africa 2019. Catherine, for me, I've never been very keen on Catherine just because I felt like compared to all of the other women, especially in 2021 with that whole lineup, she was definitely the one for me who was lacking, which might explain why she didn't end up making top five. I don't know how much she has grown up until this point, so I suppose we'll have to see. All I know is that last time she competed, she definitely wasn't on the level of being a Miss SA or a Miss SA representative yet. But hey, people can change a lot in a few years. I mean, Zozi went from top 26 to winning Miss South Africa in the span of two years. So let's see what Catherine has to offer this year. Another exciting entry for me especially is Kyalo Boha Nkashi, who was actually in the top 10 at Miss South Africa last year. Now, guys, Kelo Boha actually has a lot of people supporting her and who love her. I have not heard one negative thing about Kelo Boha. I always hear people, especially the girls who competed alongside her, say she's very strong. You know, keep an eye out for Kelo Boha. She could very much be the next Miss SA. And I won't debate that. I think that Kyalo Boha is one of the best speakers. She was one of the best speakers last year. She's a very dynamic woman. So I'm obviously very excited to see what's going to be happening to Kyalo Boha this year. I hope she doesn't fall into the same trap as Bianca Besaid Note, who, you know, as you know, was in the top five of Miss SA 2021, but then she came back last year and didn't even end up placing. So I hope that doesn't happen to Kyalo Boha but I definitely think that Kelo Boha, with the amount of amazing things that I've heard about her, more so than any other contestant from last year, or even the year before that, Kelo Boha just has a lot of people who are closely knitted with the Miss South Africa organization, and also the girls who competed alongside her. She has a lot of support, and I think that indicates that she has a good personality, which as you guys know, goes a very long way in the pageant world and could be the difference between winning and not winning. So I'm very excited to see Kyalo Boha back. 
Then, of course, we have a very famous contestant, Miss Brioni Govender, who a lot of people love. Now, Brioni actually competed back in Tamron Green's year 2018. Brioni was a top 12 contestant in Miss South Africa 2018. A lot of people love this woman. I think that she's gorgeous and amazing. I didn't follow Miss SA with the same veracity back in 2018 as I do now. Of course, I, I still did follow it. But for me, Brioni serves a very important role in Miss South Africa, which is she very much also highlights South Africa's Indian population and the Indian heritage. And I think it's high time, actually, that South Africa has an Indian Miss South Africa once again. I can't remember the last time one woman that comes to mind of course is the beautiful karishni niker but besides that where are the indian miss south africans i mean south africa hosts the largest population of indians outside of india so i would love to see another indian miss south africa like brioni governor i hope that she at least makes top 30 or top 10 again and that i get to see her compete one more time then of course we have beulah baduza who actually competed alongside zozi binitunzi at miss south africa 2019 she ended up placing in the top 16 unfortunately i'm hoping this time that she can go a little bit further but we'll have to see and then lastly, a lot of people skipped over this woman, but I have to mention Nicole Vilmans because I am such an avid Survivor South Africa fan. And Nicole, if you guys didn't know, won Survivor South Africa. And that was such a moment. You guys, I highly recommend watching that season. It was, it came down to Nicole and Chappies and of course, in my heart of hearts, I sort of wanted Chappie to win just because he was such a character. But at the end of the day, I'm so glad that Nicole got that. And Nicole has entered Miss South Africa before. She was in the top 35 at Miss South Africa 2020. And so we actually have a Survivor South Africa winner who was also in the top 35 of Miss South Africa. And I'm not surprised because this girl is gorgeous. Oh, if you guys watched survivor south africa her figure is everything she has the most beautiful athletic figure which of course showed itself in all of those physical challenges like i wouldn't last one day on survivor south africa in fact the first wave of the apocalypse i have to go i am such a useless member of society you guys don't understand anyway guys those were the most exciting re-entries for miss sa 2023 let me know what you guys think who are you guys' favorites to make the top 10 because oh as much as it pains me to say i know not all of these women are going to make top 10 in fact we will be lucky if two or maybe three of these women end up making the top 10 again because the miss south africa organization I don't know, they, they like giving newbies a chance, which is perhaps a good thing, but also, oh, there are so many good women who are re-entering, and oh my word, especially the 2020 girls. I mean, can we just have the entire top 10 of the 2020, with the exception of Shudo, of course, because she can't enter again, she won, come back. Can we just have the entire top nine of the 2020 class back? And just have it again because the 2020 girls honestly i don't think that they got everything that they deserved okay they deserve the big stage the huge pageant which is perhaps why three of them three of the best ones arguably decided to re-enter again this year guys let me know what you guys think i'm so excited for miss south africa this year honestly i am highly thinking about going in person um, depending on where it's hosted, because I'm going to Johannesburg now in a month's time. Then I'm going to be in Johannesburg. And then if Miss South Africa is going to be held in Johannesburg, I don't know, it's probably going to be held like a month after I come back and then I have to go again. Honestly, I would be better off if Miss South Africa is held in Cape Town because that's way closer to me than Johannesburg. I mean, Johannesburg is twice the distance from me um than cape town is so i would be stoked if miss south africa is held in cape town then i would definitely go so let me know what you guys think i'm definitely with this this re-entry list 
oh my goodness guys to see natasha and jordan and melissa battling it out on stage praying to the pageant gods that all three of them make it it's going to be an absolute bloodbath so let me know what you guys think thank you so much for watching if you haven't already please subscribe and i will see you in the next one bye